Hi, friends. Let's continue our education on the topic of digestive tract. And we are talking today again about small intestine lecture 9A, means that there is lecture 9. Please see on my channel. So if a person has gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, or constipation and diarrhea, nausea, sour taste in the mouth, or unpleasant taste, flatulence, abdominal pain, and fetus stool, also called in, in medical terms, steatorrhea, then person probably has a problem in the small intestine. On this slide, you can see a picture of digestive enzyme that I, find, I found on Amazon. And when you read the label, you can see there are many different enzymes are here, including lactose, lactose, and they also put few um, uh, a billion of bacterium here. There is no harm going ahead and trying that. If you try and it's helped, then you lucky one. If it did not help, then continue uh, listening to this lecture. You need to learn a little bit more about small intestine and its function. So the functions are here. Here on the right, you can see a picture. This pink is small intestine. When you slice it, you will see that inside there are many folds. If you zoom on individual fold, you can see there are many villi. And that's how individual villi is look like. So they align outside with the cells that will perform those functions, digestion, endocrine function, and absorption. Within each villi, there is a blood vessel, artery and vein, and the nerve. So when the food gets absorbed, it will get absorbed into the bloodstream and delivered into individual cells in our body, and we will build our body. Those creases and villi drastically will increase uh, surface of small intestine. So in small intestine is about six, seven, eight meters long. But because of those uh, crypts and villi, the surface becomes enormous. So you can assume that the digestion, digestion power, endocrine power, and absorption is huge. On this slide, you can see a biopsy of the small intestine, normal small intestine. It looks like that. So you have villi and you have a clip that I they are deep and villi are tall, deep creep and tall villi. On the left, there are functions and digestion fu function is performed by disaccharides such as maltose, sucrose and lactose, peptidase and enterokinase. And the green function performed by secretin cholecystokinin, and enterogaston. When the food is broken down by these digestive enzymes into smallest, smallest particles, it will get absorbed through the surface of those villi and will go into the bloodstream. That's called absorption. On this slide, you can see that person has a celiac disease, meaning that Crypts are not very deep, and villi are not very tall. So what the consequences of that, of this? And the consequences are simple. So villi are cut here. You can expect fewer digestive enzymes and less endocrine uh, function and less absorption. With that said, let's go to the blackboard and talk more about the consequences when there is an inflammation in the small intestine, what happened to our body. As always, you're looking at my favorite picture of the digestive tract. Oops, let's take a wipe. So this is the mouse with the teeth. Food will go here. It will go through esophagus, will drop into the stomach. This long, long, long pipe is the small intestine. Then food will go into the large intestine and eventually through the large intestine and will get excreted right here. Green is the liver. This is the gallbladder and gallbladder will drains into the small intestine. P is for pancre pancreatic enzyme. 
excuse me, pa pancreatic gland. So here I draw a slice, a little slice that you look under the microscope of the small intestine. So you can see villi and you can see creep and they all aligned by cells. So this is the normal. That's how normal looks like. Now you have the inflammation, celiac disease, irritable bowel syndrome, or person have bacterial or viral infection where the, the villi and the surface of the small intestine is get, get damaged. So as a result, it looks not so good. So you can see some of the villi get preserved, but most of that is lost. What's the consequence of that? Let's talk. So when I talked about uh, digestive function, I said that some of those enzymes that live here in, um, oh, let's take a black, a uh, white one, that live here on the surface or in the villi, they will be maltose, sucrose, or um, uh, lactose. So what happened is you just have very few of them. So here and there, maybe one or two. The consequence of that, suppose you put a dairy product here, milk, and you are missing enzyme that called lactose. You have only few. As a result, milk comes in here and the sugar from the milk cannot be broken down. As a result, milk get not digested, not absorbed. It will go out here, like out of digestive tract in form of diarrhea. So this is just example of poor digestion. How about endocrine function? I said there is a secretin there, CCK and entragaston. Let's talk about CCK. So CCK uh, or, uh, uh, will get produced again by a uh, um, gland that, that located right here. And they will go into the bloodstream here locally. And what CCK will do, it will increase contraction of gallbladder and pancreatic gland. So when the CCK get produced here, it will affect immediately gallbladder. As a result, bile will start to come out here in the small intestine and you will start to digest fat. Pancreatic enzymes, such as amylase, lipase, and protease get released here, and you will start to digest protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Now, you have very few of those enzymes because you have a very, um, very little CCK. So as a result, there is not enough CCK to stimulate pancreas and gallbladder to contract and release their secre secretion here. As a result, that food that stays here, poorly digested, cannot be absorbed. As a result, all of that get lost in the bathroom. The other secretory function is done by entragaston. What entragaston, when get released here, it's exhibit its effect locally on the stomach. And what it does, it tells stomach, stop moving and start stop producing hydrochloric acid, HCL, okay? HCL is produced by stomach to digest protein. When you eat the food, food drops here, you produce hydrochloric acid, food partially digested, get here into small intestine and small intestine sends the food and tell stomach, okay, enough producing. That's how you stop to produce hydrochloric acid. If you do not have this so-called feedback mechanism, it's broken because you don't, you don't have enough villi. There is not enough gas, um, enteragaston produced so hydrochloric acid will be continued produced, produced, and nothing stops it from the production. The consequences of that is too much hydrochloric acid in the stomach. It will go up here into esophagus 
and will create acid reflux. So let me I'm just so guys, I hope I made it really clear for you how important to have a healthy small intestine. Suppose the person who has a problem in the small intestine and then because of the lack of production of enterogaston, hydrochloric acid by the stomach is not uh, suppressed. Stomach is keeps churning. As a consequence, this person has acid reflux. What do you do? You go to your primary care physician or gastroenterologist and they prescribe you PPIs. So you take PPI, hydrochloric acid get suppressed and it's suppressed so-called irreversibly, suppressed for a very long time. The drugs, the PPIs are not benign. You will start to create further problems such as long-term decreased production of hydrochloric acid means the protein is not going to be digested, means vitamin B12 is not going to be absorbed. PPI will, PPIs will create a dysbiosis in the small intestine. So what I want you to see and understand how problem in the small intestine created a secondary problem, gastritis and acid reflux. Then you will get prescription of PPI and then you will create a tertiary problem. So instead of solving underlying problem and dealing with small intestine, we as a physician, we prescribe drugs and actually will bring patients further from the health. Now, um, let's go to um, let's go back to PowerPoint presentation, and um, and we'll talk more about that. What you can do. In the beginning of this video, I already showed this picture of these enzymes. This is the best that I can find on Amazon United States. You can see that there are digestive enzymes. So it will help to digest the food. However, you don't see, oh, I was, and I was not able to find anything that has, that will would be able to restore endocrine function. So in other words, you would need supplements, secretin, CCK, and entragaston. There are no such supplements. So what do you suppose to do? And what I do for, uh, for, for client, and I would recommend here on, on YouTube, I tell people, if you have certain symptoms, try to deal with the symptom. Like um, symptom nausea means that bile is not produced and not released adequately so what you do you take bitters right or uh, let's say a person has an abdominal pain usually due to dysbiosis so take prebiotic and probiotic and i have videos on the on uh, this topic so please see those videos guys if you have any questions ask me under the video all re re relevant links are there in the description. Please read. If you have any questions, ask, like, subscribe. Bye-bye for now.